Hi, and welcome back to the channel. It's been quite a while since I stuck a video up. Uh, I've been doing decorating, as most of you know, who follow the channel regularly, and I'm pleased to say that uh, the bits that would have been stuck up and the kitchen's all up and running. Uh, when I say wood, it's obviously cabinets, but uh, to me it's just pieces of wood. And to my missus, this is a load of junk. So there you go. Just very quickly, gonna before we talk about these Ditton 100 speakers, gonna uh, just recap a few things. I've been looking back on to my last videos, probably about the last 15 videos or so. And I don't think many of them's got more than 300 views. So some of them topics and bits, I'm gonna probably sideline uh, because it's a lot of work to just get a few views. Obviously, not many people interested in it, and come back and concentrate where the views will be and where people are gonna come up and have a look. Obviously, still be doing a few repairs and that along the way, etc. But today's about these videos. Now, I'm gonna apologise for the noise in the background there's got a granddaughter over in the lip and over it makes quite a lot of noise because the one that's a bit older is in hospital with a suspected appendicitis at the moment so not too long too sure how long we're going to have her and i wanted to get the channel back up and running didn't want to leave it too long so today's about these ditton 100 speakers um these are celestial ditton by the way celestial ditton 100s now i think there's a few different models of this this 100 look some of them have got different tweeters is it I'm not too sure when they come out, I think it was about the late 80s, something like that. I'm guessing a little bit, couldn't really find out much information about these because the models I did stick up seem to have different tweeters. Uh, maybe they were Mark IIs or something. There seemed to be a few of them hundreds, I think two or three models kind of thing. But these are the ones you're going to recognise them here by the way they look. So these are the ones I'm going to be reviewing today. Now, these didn't cost me much money because I'm a bit of a tight git and uh, this is what the channel's about as well, to get as you know as, as good a quality as you can for as little as possible. Now, saying that, I did have the fault, uh, fortune, I said misfortune then, which is the wrong word. I had the fortune of uh, popping into an iFi uh, shop. I'm going to talk about that in a future video. I popped in, I'm not going to say which one it is at the moment, but I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to split that over two, talking about iFi shops and the particular one I went in and, and, and a few other bits and pieces. So I'll probably split it over two videos because you know what I'm like, talk forever. And uh, they gone for seven hours. So, um, yeah, just uh, it's a four thousand pound. I actually listened to a, a system that uh, only briefly that cost um, probably probably three or four hundred thousand altogether. But we won't talk about that here yet. But I did listen to a system, a, a more a greater length, four thousand pound system. So, I'm going to do a video out of that four thousand pound system because it's still embedded in my head. Well, I still got it in my memory how that sounded compared to the to the junk I've got here, shall we say, and uh, how they compared. Uh, and don't forget, it's obviously a big price gap, so we're gonna, I'm gonna talk about that anyway. How I, how I see it anyway. Right, so back to these. Ditton 100s now. Uh, with normal stuff, I'm gonna put them on the floor, uh, usually on my bench, but bench still got a few bits on there. So on the floor, and have a look how these look. So there it is on the floor, and um, let's just turn over to my notes, I'm not what I'm talking about. Uh, was that it, where's my notes? So what's actually written on the back? Oh, there you go, here we go. I've lost myself a little bit there. I ain't done it for so long. Right, okay, so um, as we look at it on the floor, I'm gonna take the main driver out. Now this is a seven inch driver. This is a T3474, and it's uh, the model B1702. Now this is a seven inch driver. I couldn't find out much information about this driver, but it's got a reasonably sized magnet on the back there, as you can see, so that's, uh, you know, it looks a, a reasonable driver there. Uh, the tweeter is an HF1001 tweeter. Uh, again, couldn't really find out a lot of information, a little bit more information, not a lot of information about this, but this is apparently used in the Rogers LS7 speakers, the monitors from uh, Rogers there, so that is used in other speakers and probably some others as well, but I couldn't really find a lot of information in the little time frame I did it. And like I say, I'm not too sure what year these come out, so maybe someone can tell me what year these did come out. But uh, we look, look, look at a crossover. Uh, I think it's one car with it, three capacitors, something like that, if memory serves me right. So that's the crossover. Um, so yeah, uh, I've got these cheap, like I say, I always go and buy stuff cheap. I've got my little notes there, just put them aside. I'm going to show you the reason here, just stick up a picture of why I got them cheap. It's because the back, uh, whoever had them, the backs have obviously fell apart, come undone or whatever, and it's kind of got this uh, connection block at the back. So that's what I used, my, I, I, I wired into that connection block, but obviously uh, I could get myself a, a proper thing, proper connectors, and put them on the back if I wanted to. But that's how I bought them, and they cost me twenty pounds. So twenty pounds, absolutely nothing these days. You know, you know these builders we've had around and all that kind of stuff. They seem they seem to charge crazy amounts of daily rate on that. I think I've lost touch a little bit over the last three years uh, since I started this channel. I think everything's probably gone up fifty percent. So um, these are, these are nothing really. And even on eBay, I think they sell for about forty pound. 
uh, obviously we're not a silly collection at the back, or as they should stand, 40, maybe 50 pound tops, absolutely 50 pound tops. So uh, give you an idea what they go for. They're kind of incomparable with the uh, little Wolfdale threes that I like, you know what I mean? They're, they're quite a popular speaker that I like, you know what I mean? Uh, and they're the kind of um, speaker I kind of pit these kind of speakers up against. Because uh, that kind of bookshelf kind of thing. This was but this was was this yeah this was bottom of the range. They did the one tens, the one thirties, the one fifties, the two hundreds. I think there's a little bit of a range in these at the time. And uh, I've been reading a few reviews that I've found. Uh, there was only a few as well. And uh, one bloke he had these, the one tens and the one thirties. And it seemed that he, he quite he quite liked these, and he liked the one thirties a bit better. And he didn't quite like the one tens, that kind of thing. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll be interested to see what the one thirty sound like. So another speaker I'll put to my list, but I'll get me no particular order, just as they come as cheap as possible. Uh, and just very quickly, you know, nothing about these yet really, but I uh, just want to say my normal waffle is that uh, I'll get these knowing full well that hopefully if, if, if I don't like them, I don't want to keep them. I'm going to do a cheap review. And I'll, I'll sell these drivers on on my uh, eBay site for anyone that you know may need the drivers and I try and undercut everyone else that sells them on there and give people a chance and try, obviously trying to you know get my money back as well and give people a chance to um, you know get their speakers up and running because and, and enjoy the music kind of thing okay got two amplifiers here and the reason I've got these two here these these are different from each other these are both sans two amplifiers now I haven't tested these on a new amp a newish amp should I say and that's something I'm looking out for at the moment on eBay I want to get myself a cheap not too dear that kind of fits into my price bracket uh, I can't go too cheap. My channel is normally under two hundred pound, so I can't get a, a sub two hundred pound amplifier because it's probably going to sound not that great. One of these fuzzy things, so I'm not too keen on them D class amplifiers. I'd rather have something in this kind of range. I'm looking at the range, um, a Riga maybe, you know, Toyn, you know, maybe, but I'm going to pay over, you know, over the two hundred pound bracket. I want to pay, so I'm looking around at a second hand at the moment, but uh, just to kind of give an impression what, and, and bring a video to the channel, give an impression what these sound to something a bit more current. So that'd be good as well. But anyway, going to the two amplifiers I used here. These are two different. This, this has got more of a delicate touch. This has not got so much power. Uh, this Sansui 331, quite an airy kind of sound amplifier. And this is a Sansui 317. Now, I managed to get myself a 317. This is the Mark II. Uh, also looking out for a 37 Mark I because I'd be interested to hear how they the sound difference on them two as well. But I will do a review on this pretty soon. Uh, the reason I got this is that uh, I had the 217. I quite like that. And... The judge, the master, Stereo Review X likes this amplifier. So if he likes this, and I like all every, I don't think I've disagreed with a video he's put up there that I've heard, uh, that, you know, when he compares and all that kind of stuff, that uh, if he says this is good, then it obviously is good. So uh, I'll do my review on that soon as well. So yeah, this has got, it's got more of a kick to it, like, you know what I mean? The bass is big on this amplifier when it ain't so big on this amplifier here. And it's got more wattage. This is 60 watts a channel. And this, I think, is about 11 or 12, somewhere around there. So it's a bit of a difference, and it does make a difference on these speakers here as well. So that's the reason I've got these two amplifiers out with these speakers. Right, you've been 50 minutes into the video, you fell asleep, and I'm finally going to tell you what they sound like. So we're going to go to the top end. As normal, I play a variety of tracks, all that kind of stuff. Okay, I do pretty much every genre, really, apart from every rock. So my reviews, if you ever look at any of them, I've never done anything really heavy kind of thing but I do have a general classical jazz you no know, pop all that kind of stuff okay so how did these sound so the top end of these I'm going to do it on both amplifiers it's really talking about the bass on this amplifier and a little bit more of the uh, the body with this amplifier uh, out of each sound but we'll come to that as it goes so the top end it's quite bright the top end it's not over bright but it's just got that touch of brightness to it it's, it's plenty of top end there and it's got some good detail in that top end as well I just found it just a tad bright. You may not, you know what I mean? It depends how bright you like your top end. I just thought this, you know, it really sucked out the top end of the recordings kind of thing. Uh, and sometimes I found it just could slightly, just slightly, and I'm, I'm being picky again for what you're going to pay for these. It's silly, like, you know, we can compare it to a pair of speakers, like £1,400 or something these days. But I thought the top end was just, it could just get a little me metallic, just a little bit, just a little bit metallic, just a little bit. But so the detail was there, and it was good, it was nice. And on this particular amplifier here, this Sansui, and it's got a bit more of a valvey kind of sound. It's a valvey sound amplifier, quite an airy sound. And, the, and these do, you know, the airiness this gives out, these produce it okay, uh, you know, very good. Maybe not quite as good as, I, I do like the, the, the airiness of them Wolfdale 3s. There's not a lot in it, but these do a pretty good job of that airiness as well. 
uh, and the three dimensional, which is pretty good as well. Just thought the Wolf Dowels just give it a little bit more three dimensional, to be honest with you. But it's a good three dimensional sound to it with these speakers as well on an amplifier that can deliver that. If your amplifier is not going to deliver a three dimensional sound, you're not going to get a three dimensional sound. So just bear that in mind as well. But um, on this amplifier, I just found that maybe you could just I could just turn. It's a thing that people don't do. But I think it's worth it with these speakers because you're going to get from not a lot of money. You're going to get some nice sounds out of these. Is that just turn that treble down one little notch just if you think it's just a little bit too bright for you. Mid range was excellent, very very good. Now don't forget, I'm, I'm, I should really mention this in all the videos. Don't forget for what we're paying for these, what we're paying and what you're going to get them for. These are not going to be a fourteen hundred pound pair of speakers, and when I compare these to that, it's going to be a vast amount of difference, obviously. But you'll get some good stuff here. Not going to get a silly pair of speakers you get with your old. You know, old iPhone and music centre things that they're, they're, they're a million miles away like you know you get some nice sounds from these but anyway the mid-range was nice you know the vocals the um, sax guitar piano all sounded really nice on these speakers and they've got you know they've got room to breathe these speakers this but you know, this bass unit here is one of these bass units that uh, in a recent video of Stereo Review X, he kind of says that this has got, you know, it just goes along all by itself. It's free to do what it wants to do. It's got no connection with the rest of the speaker kind of thing, with the tweet. It's doing what it wants to do. It's got plenty of room and all that. And it does remind me a bit of um, them, what they call Dynaco AR35s have got. That's got the freedom. That's got the space on the bass and that. And this has as well. It's got the freedom. It's got the space. Don't forget, you know, I'm not, don't go overboard because it's only a small little speaker, but it gives some, gives some nice freedom there. And it's not one noted at all, you know, it's plenty of, it's plenty of detail in that bass. It's excellent, you know what I mean? It really is. It's, it, it sounds really good. Okay, so just make sure. Now this has got plenty of space around the instruments. You can deliver that space around the instruments and all that kind of stuff. That three-dimensional, that airiness, you know. Don't get carried away, you know what I mean? These, these are not like, let's say, top of the range speakers, 14, 15, you know, good about that, but for what they are, they do a really, really good job, you know what I mean? You're going to get a lot, lot worse speakers than these, you know, for, for a hundred pound kind of thing you're buying off of eBay and all them places. So these, these are good. Uh, what I would say is, this is where this amplifier comes in now, this is giving the raw power to the The bass is a bit lacking in these, these are lacking. They only go down to 92 dB, I think. And uh, on this particular amplifier here, Depending what track you're playing, if you're a person that's got to add the bass, I I'm not a person to start adding subwoofers and all that, but if you wanted to get the bass and get it kicking a bit more, you would have to knock it up to probably there where it is, three, what's that, nine o'clock, is it nine o'clock? You would have to knock it, no, it isn't, what's it, no, 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 three o'clock, three o'clock. So you have to turn it here, if I've done it out, it goes plus two, plus four, plus six, I've got it on on this particular amplifier, but so I've just turned that treble down a bit to give that bass a bit more oomph to it. But it's still maybe just a tad lacking, just a tad on some songs. Some songs can sound, with this particular amplifier, this airy kind of sounding amplifier, this valve sound amplifier, it can sound a bit thin on some tracks still. The old presentation can sound a little bit thin. But other than that, it's a, you know, it's a good sounding set of speakers using this amp here. Now if we go onto this amp here, this has got more welly to it. So it's, it adds that body to it first, so it's got some kick to it, it's got some drive, it's got some power to it, all that kind of stuff. So that thinness kind of disappears. He's getting rid of that kind of thinness because he's giving the body the power to it. So, uh, but even so, you, you can quite you, you can have it on bass on zero here. You can have it on zero. I just like to get that oomph, that rhythm, all that kind of stuff. Especially if I listen to disco and all that kind of stuff, get the rhythm into it. So I'd be tempted to do that on plus four, two notches plus four. That's where I'm probably sitting this amplifier. I know people say, you know, they like it on zero zero, a clean feed, tone defeat, whatever, all that kind of stuff. And that's how I listen to all my music. I listen to every single amplifier I put on. That's, that's exactly where I put it. But I think these speakers are worth, and they don't interfere. This putting this plus bass here at nine o'clock, three o'clock, and this one here at plus four. Sometimes on other on, on other speakers, and that, that interferes. That muddles things up, makes things a bit murky, all that kind of stuff. These handle it well. You know what I mean? These these do a good job, and it's well worth doing that. So, like I say, if you're looking at these speakers and you see a pair, and you think I'll be tempted to that. Have a, have, you know, have a look definitely, you know, definitely worth um, definitely worth 40 pound, 50 pound kind of thing. You get a nice big sound from them as well. They're quite a big sounding speakers. Do remind me quite a bit about them AR35s. I've got them uh, Dynatron ones, Dynaco ones. Sorry, I'm getting mixed up because I'm looking at all different speakers. Uh, Dyna, uh, Dynaco ones do give me some kind of resemblance to them, even though they're a bigger unit, give much more, they're more detailed. They're a better speaker, don't get me wrong. But these do edge in that direction and, you know, kind of, Give me the feel for them as well so i'm pretty pleased with these 
Uh, normally I take these apart, like I say. I, I, I'll basically go in front of the sound stage as well very, very quickly. Like I say, it's got their areas, it's got their three dimensions. Not quite, not quite as, as the Wolfdale threes. But other than that, the instruments were nicely placed and everything else. They all sounded nice. Uh, overall, you know, it was, it was quite nice. It's very enjoyable. Get that nice sweet spot in between the speakers and that triangle. And you're, you're immense, especially with the amplifier here. Is that uh, hologram kind of sound? It's another word for it. I can't remember what it was. Hologram kind of sound. Nice three-dimensional to it. This one, not so much, but it's got that oomph, it's got that kick, and it gets you involved. It does get you involved more than this amplifier on this particular set of speakers. It does just needs that extra drive because these only go down to 92 dB. So I'm hoping you kind of understand what I'm coming from with these speakers here. So that's them. Um, so that's it, really. I think I'll pretty much wrap them up. Um, like I say, if you see them for 40, 50 pounds and you're tempted, you know, uh, as long as you're not a really bass heavy person, then maybe stay clear or you know, get, your, get an amplifier that's got that kick, that bass to it. If you've got a light sound amplifier, you may just be a little bit disappointed because it just may lose, um, sound a bit thin and uh, not so much body and texture to it and um, timber to it as well. You do lose a bit of timber to it with this. This adds it in, this gives it, because it's got the drive, it's got the extra power and it's, you know, it goes down kind of lower. Um, but still, you know, not a bad set of speakers at all. In fact, you know, I definitely recommend these speakers if you're thinking about getting them and you, you see like a pair going cheap. Okay, that's it. So hopefully I've wrapped it up on this particular uh, set of speakers. Like I say, we'll come back with a review on this amp. I think I've got another couple of reviews I want to bring as well. And like I say, uh, also going to, you know, kind of not got it in here to show you, but going to compare that £4,000 system and talk about uh, going, you know, what, why it's not, not, not a bad idea to actually walk into an iFi shop uh, rather than buying off of Amazon or eBay or something you never heard, you know, you ain't actually listened to it, you ain't auditioned to it. Well, it's definitely worth, I think. Uh, after my visit, uh, going to uh, an iFi shop. Okay, I'll say thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon.